Welcome back viewers. Um, today in our panel we have three members, we are including myself, um, Mr. Asare Boebu and Mr. Bedukusi, but I want them to introduce themselves before we carry on from where we left off. Um, can you go first, please? Oh, okay, first yes, uh, again, I'm uh, Gilbert Asare Buedu. The name I love, actually, is Kwame Asare Buedu. You know, Gilbert is a slave name. Don't blame me. Blame my father. I work with AFH Wealth Management Company. We do it, everything finance. And I specialize in insurance, uh, personal protection. So anything personal protection from critical illness cover, mortgage, life insurance, your income protection, etc., etc. I'm sure we will go into details as we progress. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, um, thank you very much, Mr. Eric Bidonko. I think I've been on your panel before. My name is Charles Belukusi. Um, I'm a former uh, staff at Ghana International Bank. I also work for Bank of New York, uh, RBS Trust in the Treasury Department. So I'm sort of fairly uh, uh, conversant with financial issues. Uh, currently in business, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so I think that should be enough, yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Asarabwadu, Kwame Asarabwadu, I think we have to take the Gilbert away, the Gilbert away <laughs> and then, you know, so I also want to take the Eric away, it's going to be Kweku Ayakwa Debra, which is, you that's know, also a superb name, yeah, it's a superb name, so there you go, K-A-D, that's cut for short, oh good, um, like so that. Mr. Kwame Asarabwadu, mm. I want you to carry on with the description of how the policy works, you know, what we were going through before. No, okay. Or viewers I, to us. I think I did mention that prior to you taking up any insurance cover whatsoever, seek advice from a trusted advisor. Because in every field, there are key words you may not understand. <laughs> And so you don't want a situation whereby you sign up to a policy 20 years later and you cannot claim for it. When it comes to insurance, you only win when you claim. Mm -hmm. You win when you claim. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of signing up an insurance policy and then canceling it short time doesn't work. It does not even make sense. When you do that, the insurance provider smiles. He's laughing. Because he's made money of you and not giving you anything back. Before before you carry on, I did one, you know. <laughs> Sorry to have with smart insurance. Yeah. And we did it for almost a year, over a year. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that, you know, there was no explanation as to how to claim as to the you know, the particular kind of if it's credit card illness and all that details. Mm -hmm. The the policy wasn't sort of explained properly to me so i decided to quit right. and going for the santander one and the, you know the bank one mm. so i lost money right. they said that they were going to refund me some cash but they never did you know i just so yeah. I, i'm just trying to you yes. know buttress i, I mean that, that, that is so what you were saying and that is why most people especially the whites they ask for longer terms on insurance and some of, uh, some of them actually go for the whole of life. There are two different types of insurance you may want to look into. The termed insurance and then the whole of life, which is indefinite. It has no end okay. day to it. Mm. However, it is very expensive. Mm. It costs a bow. It costs about 10 times more than the termed insurance. Okay. So for a termed insurance of about 50 years, where you pay about 30 pounds, on the whole of life, you end up paying about 250, 280 pounds oh, wow. a month. Mm. But there is a way around it. I'm sure we will get Just to it. Just would you say that this, this type of thing has happened like in recent times? Because I remember uh, quite a while, a while back ago, in the, in the early 1990s, mm. um, I think I did take on a whole life uh, policy. Mm. And in all fairness, in those times, they never cost that much money. Okay. Mm. Right. So I think that maybe uh, over the years, mm. yes, over the years, <laughs> or probably, you know, people making fraudulent claims and all that sort of thing. Mm. But I kind of quite remember mm. that it never used to cost that much. I mean, insurance goes through evolution. You know, there was a time, time where we had the endowment policy. 
yes. where you, with, with insurance, it, it's almost like an investment. So when the term period ends, you get some money back from everything that you've paid. Mm -hmm. If the term period doesn't end and you die, you still get your sum assured. Okay. That does not happen anymore, anymore. Okay. unfortunately. And with the whole of life now, it costs them it's both. Expensive. It's certainly very, very expensive. Because I can't remember what you were saying that insurance life policy wasn't expensive. Ooh, what, what I realized was that with the smart that I was talking about, the yeah. smart insurance, the, the life policy, mm. they advertise so attractively on the TV and all mm. that mm. stations. And then they will tell you, oh, it's three ninety nine, it's ten ninety nine. <laughs> so you sign up to win and all that. And then you give them a call. Mm. By the time they finish, do you want this? Do you want that? You by want by the time they finish all their explanation and mm. the detailed sort of things that they will talk about about the policy, yes. you'll be hitting almost a hundred pound. Oh, of course, yes. So I was telling myself, so if you are advertising for ten ninety nine and mm. you end up paying ninety three pounds a night because mm. I, I was paying almost close to a hundred pounds. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's why I've always said, when people call me, they call me first of all with money. They'll say, please, can I have insurance for 20 pounds? And I always tell them, don't look at insurance like a KFC joint. Mm -hmm. yes. Insurance is not something that is sold on the market. You actually have to apply for insurance for the person, the insurer. Mm -hmm. To actually look at your circumstance and then make a decision. That is a whether very, to first yeah. accept you mm -hmm. as an ins the insured, mm -hmm. or to accept you on special terms, uh -huh. or to decline you. Because if it wasn't for them, I, I never knew that you have to go through a rigorous sort of application mm -hmm. whereby they vet you mm -hmm. to see your suitability. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Because at the end of the day, you could be dying. You could know that you're dying and in a few you, months. And then yeah. you're taking up the policy. And then you take up the policy, you mm -hmm. die, and straight away, you've only paid 30 pounds, we need to pay you 200,000 mm pounds. -hmm. That is not very fair on, on, the, on, on the, insurer. the insurer. So it's important for the insurer to first of all know who you are, understand who you are, mm -hmm. your age, do you have any sickness? How do they find out? You have a GP. You cannot get an insurance in the UK if you have not been with a GP for six months. So when 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 did they introduce all that? Because it wasn't like that. In, in the, in, in well, things do change. You know, as like with every system. That's right. Every time there is a break in, there must be a closed gate. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they realizing that okay, people, this is how this guy made it. No, let's close that door, mm -hmm. and then it keeps reforming, reforming, and then. It's not. It's keep. It's gonna keep changing, mm -hmm. which is why it's important if you do have the chance today to grab it, because once you are in, you are in. You get me. Okay. And then the more older you get, the more expensive it becomes. Yeah, insurance becomes, mm -hmm. and the more impossible it becomes to get, because the because more you are close, you are closer to, to death. death. <laughs> it is. And then as you mm -hmm. age, you get broken hearts. Women are breaking your heart. You are holding your chest, <laughs> always going to the doctor to cry. Yeah, these so, things oh, all yeah. affect I like your body. Broken heart side. <laughs> <laughs> so take it while you have the chance. Whilst you are still breathing today, every time you hear anybody anywhere speaking about personal protection, stop everything that you are doing. It is the gospel coming to you. It is the one major guaranteed means of creating wealth for your next generation because when you are alive you are a provider for a family mm -hmm. no matter how much you are bringing home even if you are bringing nothing home you are still a provider in the sense that you are providing wisdom and order for a family yeah. when you are gone they will feel the full effect of your absence yeah. they right. will feel it but how do they mitigate their absence? Mm -hmm. When you leave something behind, they will always remember. Daddy left us with this pack. That is what propelled us to get to this part. But if you leave nothing, then really you've caused pain to the family. So it's important that yes, this is a superb subject and I think that we should, everyone should be grateful to the hosts 
Kweku uh, Donko for bringing this to the viewers. Um, so the two main, the two main, what are the two main uh, uh, life policies available? Is probably very good to make it clear to the audience. Okay, when it comes to personal protection, there is the life insurance that is you, the person. It only pays on death. Okay. Or what is termed as terminal illness. Is it, is, is it the same as critical illness or? Good question. Mm -hmm. This is what the banks were doing in the past. They were selling insurance. You know, banks don't provide, they are not insurance providers. Mm -hmm. They are also intermediaries. Mm -hmm. So they speak to one of the biggest insurance companies like Aviva, Royal London, Scottish Widows, LNG, Legal and General. They speak to them and say, listen, I have a good number of customers under me, over 100,000. Yes. Why don't I preach your gospel to, mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. and then earn a commission of you? Yeah. So I sell 20, I get 5. I sell 50, I get 10. So they don't do what we do, the advisory part of it. Okay, that's the most important part. Which for me is the most important yeah, part. It is. It's the one part mm -hmm. that guarantees you mm -hmm. a claim in the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, if you surpass the advisory part mm -hmm. and then you just go to get it, the part where it says, oh, pre-existing condition, all these questions all these come questions, in yeah. later mm -hmm. to bite you hard, then you cannot make a claim. So yes, there is a life insurance which only pays on death or if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness. Terminal illness means that the doctor has told you that you have three months, six months, nine months, or 12 months at most to leave this planet, mm -hmm. to die. If you get that diagnosis, the money that would have been paid to your family in case of your death will be paid to you whilst you are alive mm -hmm. so that you decide what right. to do with your money. Yeah. Yes. And then there's the critical illness. Critical illness is defined by all the providers. Each one has his definition of critical illness. So each one will state a number, about 100 critical illnesses. Some are cancer of any kind, mm -hmm. kidney uh, failure. disease failure, mm -hmm. liver failure, heart blindness, heart attack, stroke, mm -hmm. all that. It's quite vast. So, yes, when the time comes and you drop my number, anybody, any individual that wants to go into a feather, we can always help them out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, it means that we were being sold by the banks. Yeah, they were selling um, uh, life insurance mm -hmm. with the terminal illness as a different product. FCA, which is the Financial Conduct Authority, yeah. does not want to see that. There was a time in the past where you could go buy insurance, terminal illness insurance, so that if you are diagnosed with a disease, you get paid out. That was different, so many, many years ago, different from the life insurance which is paid only after you died. Mm -hmm. But FCS thought, no, this does not make any sense. The person is dying. Yeah. So why don't we combine the two? So once you get a life insurance, you're automatically covered for terminal illness. Cover. So that is so, different from critical. Critical illness, you could do a liver transplant or whatever transplant, still be alive for about 50 years. Okay. But as long as there's going to be that surgery, you must claim on your critical illness cover. So, so you, you, are you going to claim before the surgery or you claim after the surgery? When there is diagnosis mm -hmm. and then there is going to be treatment, then you put in a claim. Okay. As long as it, because you know, some of the cancers are benign. And so you may not need any treatment. Okay. You know, some of them, the breast cancer, you may need surgery to remove a lump. But the moment that you know that you're preparing for surgery, you need then to put in a clinic. Yes. Okay, so did you do one for me? On critical illness? Yeah. Yes, you've got, you, you <laughs> have got the life cover. I want to know if I'm covered. <laughs> because the bank didn't do that for me. There was no explanation as to what I'm getting myself into and all that. Mm -hmm. And it was just... A gray area, you know, you don't yeah. know what, even if there's something or if anything happens, mm. I, I couldn't have claimed. Yeah, but yeah. when you guys came in with that vast explanation and understanding mm. of how things work, mm. um, I was able to, you know, understand the whole process. And I must say, I, I was I was actually more of a joy for you mm -hmm. when your I, life came out kicked in. Yes, yes, because we went through very close, you know, very close 
sort of in terms of the in, process yeah the process is the application that yes mm. you have to go through vetting they, they go through your gp they ask questions they they you know you you, you need a whole variation of yes. mm. the moment you tell you tell an insurance provider that you take this medicine you take you on this medication then it then, then it then raises they, they, then they're going to the flag sort of, yeah, mm. so they want to know okay why are you taking yeah. this medicine? Want to know? Uh, so then they have to di dive into it. Yes. You get me. But some very bad advisors and some banks, what they do not do is that they don't ask those questions about your health. They don't your care. Smoking. They, what they need mm -hmm. is for you to sign up. They take it. The policy goes yeah. live. They and get they their commission. So that's the commission. They are. They are just commission yes. center. That's it. Yes. They but, don't care about and then it may then turn out that what you've taken there are clauses mm -hmm. that you've probably not looked at the priest. Yeah. and so when the time comes and you're ready they to don't go care play, they don't care they that's what we call it so yeah. in five years later yeah. you can no advisory that. you know you processes that. that's it yeah and no you see that's the thing for us because of the regulation how tight it is and our company itself has a compliance unit okay. within it and so when we go to clients and then after signing you up, I need to go and justify within my own company yes. why I recommended this policy to you. That's right. You get me? Yeah. So they will look at your age, they will look at everything, and then they will ask me, okay, why am I recommending this thing to you? Why this sum assured? Why this premium? Okay, you said when we went through, we went through a client lease analysis, yeah. you have to remember. Mm -hmm. So we took your expenses and then your revenue, we deducted it, we had the disposable. So if, for example, your disposable income is 50 pounds, and then I recommend a policy of 60 pounds. Um, then there is a problem. There is a problem. There is a problem. Because definitely, in the very near future, you're going to cancel the policy. Because you cannot afford it. So afford they do a very holistic so a due diligence due evaluation absolutely. of your financial circumstance. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very good. Yeah. And um, what I wanted to know, they, they, they wrote to me telling me that I haven't confirmed the details on the policy yeah. and i said i did it but if i haven't done it they said if you haven't if you've done it already then ignore this letter but i don't know why they've written to me again because i've done it I, i'm sure i've done it so maybe please royal, that is royal london yes royal can, you, london. Can, you, can you check for me if maybe they didn't go through no yours is life i know it's life it's if life. it wasn't life i, I would be biting oh and, okay so it means i've confirmed it yes what okay. happens with royal london is that some advisors, like I said, viewers, we're coming, we're gonna, we're coming back. <laughs> Please. It's getting more more interesting. Yes, it's getting more more Yeah, we're coming back. Right. So. Um